in Seattle on a business trip. I'm attending a conference and I just had the best long haul flight I've ever had. It was almost 10 hours long, but it was so comfortable because I had an entire row by myself. There weren't many people on the flight. Let me show you guys the room. This is the entrance. Here's the bathroom. And this is the bed, the safe and the mini fridge and the coffee area. And then I have lake view, which is amazing. Well, I wouldn't consider this lake view. I would say this is like partial lake view and industrial rooftop views. I'm quite happy with the room. The hotel is nice. This is the Hyatt Regency Seattle. It's much nicer than the hotel I stayed at last year when I came to Seattle. I think that was called Citizen M. So I just changed. I changed my sweater. I'm really hungry because I didn't have dinner. Well, dinner in the UK time zone. It's 4 p.m. here. I saw that there is an Asian restaurant nearby. So let's go. Let's try to find this restaurant. I'm bringing a little tote bag with me. It has like my cards and my ID and stuff and it has my book as well because I'm gonna be going to this restaurant all alone. My work colleagues are already here. They came a bit earlier than me because some of them are presenting at this conference that I'm attending and they wanted to do a dry run and to practice before the conference. So they're doing that right now. They're still at the office, but yeah, I won't be joining them today. I'll join them tomorrow. So let's go. Good morning everyone. Today is the second day of the conference. I didn't vlog yesterday because I was just focusing on meeting everyone at the conference. I just had breakfast at the hotel and now I'm gonna go into the office. As an introvert, I must say that I get overwhelmed very quickly at conferences and events and by the end of the day my energy is usually quite drained. This can be tough if you're an introvert like me and you're attending a long conference or business trip. I tend to plan for conferences in advance and pick the talks and social activities that I find most valuable to me beforehand so that I feel less overwhelmed and stressed in the moment. I am of the opinion that you don't have to say yes to everything. You can, obviously, if that brings you value and you feel FOMO if you don't. But if you feel like being alone to recharge your battery will bring you more value than joining another social activity, then I think you should just go and be alone and recharge. I learned how to sometimes politely decline social events that don't add much to the experience. I think you should network and attend events and activities in a balanced way that works for you and will bring you value. morning guys it is friday today the two-day conference is over i obviously couldn't vlog the conference it was an internal conference from the company and it was quite interesting um in case you don't know i work in the financial systems org for prime video in this conference several different departments that deal with like financial systems at amazon gathered together to discuss pain points and things that we had built to deal with those pain points some of these talks were really really interesting and I also had people from my team giving talks which was really cool there were a lot of very interesting things that I heard about and that I learned other teams and other people are doing and it gave me like some ideas of things that we could potentially explore for my own team. So let's see if it goes somewhere. As I said, today's Friday and I'm just going to go to one of the buildings in downtown Seattle and work from there. It's a really beautiful day, but it's so cold. So now I'm going to go. I'm going to grab some breakfast, maybe a Starbucks and then I'm gonna join my colleagues and we're gonna go into the office.
Could I please get a latte and uh, the berry and banana oats? Yeah, muffin? for the latte, hot or iced? Uh, hot. And what size? With 8, 10, or 16 ounces? Uh, 10. 10? And is whole milk okay in that? Yeah, that's fine. And then the muffin? Yeah, yeah there. The berry same. banana oat one? Yeah. Anything else for you to It's now a bit past 10 a.m. and we want to go for a little afternoon trip out of Seattle. Our plan is to go to Snoqualmie Falls. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It's this really beautiful waterfall outside of Seattle. It's supposed to have very interesting vegetation. The trees are supposed to be really big in this area and I think it will be super, super beautiful. I'm really excited to go. I brought my hiking gear because it is a bit of a hike. So I'm gonna text my colleagues, see what the plan is and then just change into my hiking gear. <laughs> I didn't learn how to code I would probably be working on something like this <laughs> which is pretty cool too It is the next day and today I'm returning back to London. My flight is in the afternoon. I just packed up my things, have most of it packed away already. In the bathroom, I think there's only like a few things left. I just need to put those pouches in my bag. Also, I'm gonna miss this view. This view is incredible. It's even better at night or like at twilight, but it's really fantastic. If you zoom in there, you see the Olympic Mountains. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm back in London, back in my apartment. Today's Sunday. I had a very busy week once I was back from Seattle, which is why I didn't vlog upon my return, but I'm vlogging now. It's the weekend. I'm so tired. Okay, first of all, I need to give you guys an update on books. This is the book that I just finished a couple of days ago, Two Twisted Crowns. It's the sequel to One Dark Window, which is a dark gothic fantasy novel. And it's a duology, so the story ends here with the second book, and it was really, really good. I really loved it. Iron Flame. This is the sequel to Fourth Wing, and I'm about 100 pages in. It's good, and it's gripping, and I'm looking forward to see where it goes. I always really enjoyed and took pride in learning things outside of my job, but I feel like this year I've been slacking a bit, mostly because I do content creation and I have my YouTube channel and Instagram and TikTok, and I just generally don't have that much free time to learn stuff outside of my job. Like, don't get me wrong, I love making videos and I love creating content, but sometimes I feel like I need something more to like intellectually challenge me in a way, like in a more engineering related way. So I'm having a look at the AI courses on Codecademy. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of Codecademy. It's a platform that I hold very dear to my heart because it's the platform that I started to code on. 
Back in 2019, I was a graduate aerospace engineer at Rolls-Royce and I was doing a placement in the UK at the time. And I decided to do a JavaScript course because I was curious about programming. I had friends that were coding and it seemed to me that it was something that I could apply very easily to my aerospace engineering job, even if I didn't want to become a software engineer altogether. So I decided to learn to code and I did a full video showing you guys the roadmap that I took and all the resources that I used. Um, you can check the video out if you want. I will leave it linked here in the video. I told you guys in one of my previous videos, they reached out to me and they wanted me to be a brand ambassador for them because they thought that my story was very inspiring to other people who were signing up to the platform. I'm honored to work with them and I think they are a very, very great platform to learn programming in general. At the time I picked them because the reviews online were good and the price was also affordable. Their UI is really cool because it doesn't feel like you're taking a lecture. It's actually very engaging. The skill paths are for specializing or upskilling in a certain domain, whereas the career paths are bigger self-paced courses, which contain quizzes and study material. And they have several projects that prepare us for an entry level role in a certain domain. They offer certifications as well, and they have content to prepare us for technical interviews as well as supporting teachers. Something they recently added to the platform is the job readiness checker. This is a really cool platform where you upload your experience and you link jobs that you're interested in. It will then analyze how your skills fit the job and it will give you feedback based on that. Codecademy has a free trial so you can give it a go before deciding whether you want to purchase the pro subscription. If you're in the position where I was in a couple of years ago and you want to learn to code, I think it's a wonderful place to start. If you want to upskill in a certain area, for example, wanting to learn a different programming language or wanting to get into machine learning, then it's also a really good platform for that because that's what I'm doing at the moment and what I'm using Code Academy for at the moment. If you want to sign up and support my channel at the same time, there will be a link in my description box. And if you do, I wish you best of luck and I hope that you like the platform. When I got back from Seattle, I was still suffering a bit with the jet lag and then I had a lot of work to do. I also had a few content deadlines and some videos to put out, so I managed to finish all of that. But then my energy just crashed after. <laughs> I delivered a project at work, which I had been working on throughout the summer, and that's now live in production, it's launched and everything went well. And I'm working on the second part of that project, um, which is something that we understood at first that another team would be doing it, but turns out that we were supposed to do it. So now we did it and this is gonna launch next week, I think. So hopefully that works and gets deployed smoothly as well. So because this is going to be launched in production soon, there isn't any dev work left to do. So I already started on a third project. Obviously, I can't talk about the projects, but yeah, this project is just, it requires a lot of investigation at first. This project is about a specific workflow that is required to launch something. And we have this engine which deals with a lot of financial data in our team. And this engine needs to be adapted potentially to integrate with a third party service in order to retrieve some data to enrich the data that we already have and then do some action downstream. So that's what I'm looking into right now, how we could potentially integrate with the system or whether there's another way to get the data that we need without having to um, establish this connection to a third party system because there, there might be ways where we can get this information elsewhere. So I'm looking into that, um, doing a lot of investigation, writing a doc and preparing it so it can then be reviewed with the team. Honestly, something you wouldn't expect that you need to be good at as a software engineer, but it's really true, is the skill of being able to write good documents. Because writing a doc is like telling a story. You are telling people what is the current problem, why it is a problem, how you went about trying to find a solution for it, and what is the proposed solution or the proposed solutions. It's really not that straightforward because you need to be able to explain complex topics, sometimes even business topics, not so much like technical topics, uh, in a way that people who have no context and no background on this problem and this project can understand it. So this is not that straightforward to do, and I think that people should write better documentation and write more docs to justify decisions. Sometimes things are implemented in certain ways and the decision was made years ago by someone who has left the company and you have no clue why that was the case. So having some good documentation, some good docs can really save your ass sometimes. <laughs> I'm really hungry now. Let's make some soup. Actually, no, I'm not gonna make soup. I already have soup, but I'm gonna prepare some soup for myself. Just this one, carrot soup. So Dahlia just called me. I don't know if you guys know her. She's a tech unicorn on Instagram and also here on YouTube. She makes tech and like digital nomad lifestyle type of content. 
and she's in London right now and I'm potentially meeting her tomorrow. There was like a tech Instagram girls lunch today, but I couldn't join, but I'm excited to see her tomorrow. Cheers! 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 Cheers. Cheers.